welcome. And thank you to be here. I would like to speak to you about something that I think is primarily important in our everyday life. And I'm very pleased that before me spoke Ulisse Di Corpo because what you exposed is very, very in tune with what is uh, dear to me. I would like to speak to you to the possibility to live in another way this life. I believe that we all have been seeking in our spiritual journey a solution to a deep conflict that we feel. And we have been seeking this solution in many places, maybe in relationships, maybe in your job, in your passions. Maybe you went a bit innerly and you started to seek for it in trauma of the past, in analysis. And then maybe you end up in some places like this and you start to seek it in spirituality. And you looked for answers very long. And sometimes some answers seem more in tune with you and you go along with them for a while. And then arrives the moment in which you have to drop all ideas and all answers. And it's a time in which you can stay with that deep question and to let, let it all sink in your heart. And I don't use this word, heart, lightly. It's not about a fleeting emotion between two people or passion. I thought these things for sure are very nice and are part of our human experience. I'm speaking about moving out of what is true of you, what your heart knows, your heart knows that is true. And letting your life to start to belong to this that is true of you. And not to that strategies or compensation or behaviors that maybe you build up in years to protect yourself from that pain of separation. And when I say this in an undual conference, somebody could say, there is no choice. There is no free will. What can I do? Only what is happening can happen. And that is perfectly true, but I'm not speaking to apparent individuals. I'm speaking about, and I'm speaking to, myself, consciousness. I thought it was very beautiful yesterday when we all meet together in the piazza discussing functioning as one and yet diverse. And this multiverse exploring itself through all these forms, I think is the beauty of sand and the deep sense of it. There is a will of the universe and is the will of your heart, of that part of you that knows what is true. And I'm talking about letting your life start to belong to this. The first things that come up is, I cannot. It's too hard. It will break my heart. People out there are not going to do it. And that's, we know, is the mind. But we have this possibility, another possibility. When I say that there is no other people out there, I'm not saying it from a space nihilistic. There is you out there. One being 
in many forms. And what makes your, hard, your life hard and difficult is to behave as if this is not true. So what I'm saying is extremely simple, but is a simplicity that comes for having crossed that fear of separation and have embodied it. You see, often in many teachings, there is the very writers pointing to the fact that what we really are at base is nothingness, silence, void, permanence. And this is our home, this is our true identity, is what we truly are. But sometimes in these teachings is forgotten or is not received so fully and the people listening, the importance of bringing this recognition in our everyday life, in our actions, in our talks, in little and things and big things of our everyday life. Often it's forgotten to embody this recognition of oneness. Because this would ask you to confront yourself with those shadows with that darkness that maybe you escape from, sometimes running into spirituality even. We are all called. The invitation is here. It's an invitation to live from what you know to be. And the beauty of this, and I, I think that this this gathering is showing this very beautifully, is that in living from this that you know you are, you become yourself. You know that longing to feel that you are yourself, that you are whole, complete. It comes from functioning from what is true of you. And then the body, this instrument of consciousness, starts to function from what is true. And the beauty and the joy that you feel in doing so is because this instrument is starting to work for what has been created, love. So, this transcending the sense of separation has been spoken many, many times, and I'm sure the most of you know all about it, have read many books, and have been to many retreats and conferences. And I would like today to speak with you about a process of immanence, of embodying this in your everyday life. To let this light of the self, the light of awareness, shine through your mind, through your heart, and through your body, and feel this beautiful illusion with the glory of the self, with you. You see, we often think that we are human beings going through life to seek for God whatever God is for us. And it's really the other way around. We are God having the experience of being human beings. And to me, this is what a true spirituality is about. A true spiritual life is bringing what you have discovered to be here and be it, and living it. 
and let it take all of you. And it's happening. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. And we, are, we have been seeing it in actions, in action this, in this day. The sense of lightness, the sense of connection, the humor. God is not serious. There is a beautiful quote of Osho that sometimes I say that is, seriousness is the only disease. <laughs> because before the punchline of a joke, you disappear in that laughter. And this is what is happening here. Not just here in this room with teachers talking, but outside, you know, having a beer, a coffee, chit-chatting, dancing, flirting connecting, discovering, this is highly important. I could say many things, but this is really, really the most important things. Bring what is true of you in your everyday life. Dare to live from it. This is your true longing. This is the sense of completeness you look for. So, I can speak longly, but what I discovered in these years is that if I interact with you and we all listen to what anybody has to say as ourself, we start to function as an all. And we can learn from each other and we can heal each other in this listening. Because what has to be healed is simply the illusion of the sense of separation. So I invite you to, to ask anything if you want, or to share anything. And I invite you, really, if you can, to listen any word that is said from here and to listen what is moving in you. Boredom, contraction, sympathy. Watch it, welcome it. Go through it, become it. Dissolve the other in you. This for me is love. So, if you want, I'm really here for you. And you're here for me. So, if there is a, mi a microphone, I think, I'm happy to share with you. And please stay in this openness that is here now and listen. Because you have a lot to learn from all of us here. Hi. Hi, Shakti. I would like to come back to something which appeared in the last days and as well yesterday afternoon. It's when you are frightened to open your heart because you're worried. Can, can you speak a bit close? Yeah. I'm, I'm fainting. Okay. Uh, it's when you're frightened to open your heart because you think it might break. <laughs> either to a human being or to God or to yourself. Yeah. We go in our everyday life so afraid that our heart might be broken. And so we go in the streets of life with a broken heart. When, it, when we were small children, we were functioning from this radiance that was multidimensionally radiating through our form. That's why when you see a small child, you are attracted to it. You are attracted to it, to him or to her. You are attracted from that beauty, that light, that is shining. And then 
when this consciousness unified walks through that little body in itself, in the field of itself, in life, it starts to feel vibration of contraction. The fear of mom, the depression of dad, the anger of grandma. And at a certain point, this is too painful. And you learn to protect yourself. And you learn to cover that pain of separation that you feel in the world that you are walking to, that at that point is not diverse from you, is not separated from you. You feel it in yourself, is you. To survive, you build up an illusory me and strategies not to be hurt. You do it little by little. And when you are alone, you, talk off, you take off those masks. Maybe you are playing with your friends and you're again free and joyful and radiant and happy to be alive. And then the teacher comes and you shrink again and you shrink again and you shrink again until arrives a moment in which that pain is so much and you are so angry. Teenagers feel this because their sense of identity is not crystallized yet. And they feel the desperation of seeing that it is not possible to live from that unity. They have to abdicate the longing of their heart. And then, when you surrender completely to that pain, you become an adult. And you try to function as much as you can, but on the bottom of your soul, let's say, although there is no individual soul, you know, you know that. And at, at a certain point becomes unbearable. And maybe even if you try to distract yourself with addictions or things or even spirituality, you break. And if you break fully, the funny thing, I was saying it the other day, and thank you to mention it, the funny thing is that we are most afraid to what actually we seek. We are afraid to break this barrier between us and the other, because they might hurt us, they might lie to us, they might die even. How do they dare to die, you know, and leave us alone? That we try to protect. And I have to say, with all the respect for all the beautiful teachings that exist in non-duality, that unfortunately sometimes this is the risk. I come from non-duality, I respect it very much, of course, but I see there is the risk of spiritual bypassing sometimes. There to cross that fear to have your heart broken and you discover that a broken heart is an open heart. When you cross that fear, when you cross that pain, you discover that the cage of the mind is open and empty. Empty. If you wait for the permission of the mind to open your heart, you're going to wait forever, <laughs> isn't it? No human being is born feeling separated. Not even like Hitler or whatever person we might think of, our boss or I don't know. <laughs> they, we are all born in this love, 
radiating it naturally. It's our truth. Truth is not a word. It's not an understanding of a mental theory. Thank you. Okay, what are you experiencing now? A vibration. Try to mellow into it. You see, the best way to cross resistances is not fight them, fighting them off is to understand why you have put them there. Be grateful to them and stay there. And you see they will open. You know, sometimes people say to me, Shakti is easy with you. I forget my questions. But then, outside, in the real world, in my everyday life, you don't know my mother. You don't know my boss. You don't know my wife. I do. They're me. <laughs> This beautiful illusion is happening in you. For you to have the possibility to experience what is impermanent, mortal, transient. You're not doomed in a mortal body to look for an escape out of here. It's the other way around. You created it to make experience of something that otherwise you would never know because your true nature is infinite and eternal. Please, can you pass it up? Yes. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, I agree with you 100%. And what I found living from that spot, that in everyday life, it's a great challenge. And the challenge for me is how do I, in order to live from that place in, the, in my heart, I have to abandon all my goals, all my desires, all my planning. All my? Planning. A planning, oh. Planning. Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> <laughs> because I need to stay open to what happens in front of me, to the choices that appear to me in front of me right now. Yeah. And following that right now. Yeah. Is, has led me to incredible adventures and creating incre incredible things, which I would never, ever be able to dream about in my wildest dreams. Nevertheless, knowing all that and experiencing that, I still have that um, flickering, somebody used that mm -hmm. in, in the past, flickering yeah. between the everyday mundane life, which I have to respond to, and not lose the sight of what appears 
in front of me now. Mm -hmm. And always making the choice to follow the now, despite the fact that I might have invited a group of friends for lunch. And now presents itself that I have to be somewhere else. Okay. So, how, <laughs> words of wisdom. Uh, I, think, I think we all experience that flickering. Oh, we're still doing it. Because when you touch, when you touch the truth, and I'm absolutely convinced that if you came to a non-duality conference, it's because you have touched the truth at least once, even for two seconds. When you touch this, it's like you open the door for the first time or the window of a, of a canteen, of a cellar. And a lot of light comes and shines through that window. And wow. And then it's too much, too much light because you have been living in darkness for since so long now that you close it. But in that moment in which the windows open up, the light beams start to show you that old box full of old scarpoon and shoes and books and dust. And you say, oh my God, oh my God, so much stuff here. And something is brought out. And sometimes those memories are dear to you as the scrapbook with all the pictures of you as a little girl and the old dress of grandma. And you don't want to get rid of it. You like it. Sometimes it's a box full of rubbish and you say, oh, those stinky things, I'm really happy to get rid of them. So slowly, slowly, sometimes holding on to something until it's ridiculously clear that you have to let go of it, and sometimes happy to let it go. You empty the cellar. You know, sometimes I joke and say that God is the handyman that is help, helping you to empty the cellar. <laughs> and he has to do his job. He has no much time. So you say, okay, quick, let it go. I have to go now, so please get rid of it. No, no, please. So I know that, you know, that, that flickering, that shifting is like you access for a while to, I don't want to use this word higher because there is something better than others, but it's more refined and more close to what you are. You have access to a higher vibration that is the recognition of what you are, the functioning from what you are. And then you have to go back to looking yourself as separated because you needed to empty the cellar. And that is, that is the only way Okay? The only way in which your life can, be, can belong to the self is if you kind of step down again, collect all that stuff that is still subconscious, that is still hidden under the carpet, and you bring it up. And this process of emptying yourself out of the false self and filling yourself with the true you is called the difficulties of your life. So, what you are describing to me is a, a life of somebody that is truly awakening. Because only somebody that is truly awakening, and when I say somebody, I'm speaking about one consciousness living through seven billions of forms, of course. When this happens, there is this flickering, and there are difficulties, and there is dark moments in which you say, oh my God, where, where is my wisdom? Where I've, I, I know what I am, why I acted out like that. But this is the only way in which you can see those strategies. If they rise up, 
right in front of you and you see them. That, that's where, you know, for me, it's important to see how we can self-manipulate ourselves, even with spirituality, you know? It's, it's, you have to be really honest, really courageous and humble and say, okay, it's time to live and act from what I know I am. And some way, yes, can be painful, but it's much more painful lying to yourself. So, if you can, welcome those times in which you feel so pressed, you know, compressed. Because that sense of compression, and I'm sure all of us feel sometimes, is actually the result of this radiance of love exploding through us and the trying to keep it together as if we were separated. I'm speaking of the ego now from an energetic point of view. You understand? So there are these two forces something that is like exploding and something that is trying to keep it together, a bit like our beautiful scientist was explaining before. And in staying with these and living a life of true meditation, because this is meditation, sitting in that fire, those resistances burn up and you grow into your being, in a sense, and you grow in becoming who you are, what you are. This realization starts to take everything from you and of you and becomes you. Even the cell of your body starts to become this. And when this happens physically, on the bodily level, can be a bit strange. I don't have much time now, but later I will speak more about it in, in the second part of my talk after the break. But this incarnation of self-realization, it's a real thing. And it's cellular. One thing I want to say, and later maybe we speak more about it, is that because we are so convinced to live in our little personal world, separated from one another, and we are so convinced of our so personal problem, we don't see that those difficulties are not personal. Okay? So when you are working on yourself, let's say, when you are digesting and meditating those difficulties in your life, you're actually digesting and meditating something that is present in one consciousness. It's not personal at all. This means that when you start to work and live from this realization, not only you dissolve something that seems to be so personal, but you are actually contributing to expand this in one consciousness. We receive this dream of life as an heritage. We are born in this dream of life. And more you are able to remain open and to transform like an alchemic process, fear into love, through the heart, that is the great alchemist, and more you give your contribution to make this dream better. And saying this, I have no conflict at all with this word, as it is. So I'm not saying this because I wish it to be different. Because I see that darkness, evil, is something that is there because it's the only way to enhance light in front of eyes of somebody that is ignorant and blind. 
So there is a sense in all this, even in chaos. And I want to close this moment, but I invite you, if you want, to come later and we can speak more. To say that this process of realization is not personal. You know, it's not a narcissistic path life that somebody takes to, to live a better life. This is so important. This is really, really the only opportunity that, as a planet, we have to survive. Thank you. So, all the time that you really open to this, this is possible for you to change. There is a time for a last question, if you want, and then we, we do later. Can you pass it? Grazie Antonella. Hi. I would like to come back uh, to the concept of transcendence and uh, immanence to try to, uh, to understand if it's possible to apply what you are seeing uh, yeah. in, the, in these two different dimensions. Uh, transcendence when uh, God is uh, outside space and time yeah. and uh, immanence and there, there are different inter interpretations. Uh, God can be in us, God, but distinct from, from us. Yeah. can be part of us or distinct from us uh -huh. but playing an active role. <laughs> take, take, take off the us from the equation and all remains is God. Uh, but that is, that <laughs> how is, uh, to do it? So I would like Look, to, I, to know I, what yeah, you think about How it. to do it is, I have only three minutes now so I invite you to come back to have it longer later. But are you listening? <laughs> okay. Let's do it together. Which proof do you have that you are separated? Look for a separate self now, for real, in your perception, in your experience of this moment. Beside maybe a feeling of separation. That is just a feeling. Do you find it? Do you find an us? When I look for it, I only see bodies and actions. You can find the ideas that there is in us that is just many me, isn't it? But if you look from a perception point of view, I'm, I'm uh, serious, <laughs> really, look for it. Do you find it? Did somebody find it? Just or as a feeling or as an idea, isn't it? Because it's already here. This is already true of you. Stop pretending it's not so. <laughs> or let the pretending carry on. And when it becomes too painful, it will fall off by itself. So I will for sure speak more about the imminence of this realization, the descending of this Kundalini in the body, but I need more time. So if you like to come back later, I'm happy to speak more with you. And I invite you just to finish this moment together, to close your eyes, just a second. And become aware of what you call your body. With the eyes closed, it's easier to, to see what I'm trying to point. Become aware of what you call your body and notice how in the perception of your being is just a vibration. 
there is a vibration that your mind is calling body. And notice how, although the mind is saying there is a body sat on a chair, all you can find is vibration. And notice how what you are is this emptiness, perceiving this vibration in you. You are already this emptiness, this unconditional love that is containing the entire manifestation in you. Thank you.